Well, it is week five of the NFL season, and we are here to make our confidence picks for each game. Let's get to it right now. Well, well, welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I'm Watts UK99. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch these videos. Quick reminder, we go live Wednesday nights at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Please come by and join, sharing the fun. Hey, share the channel with a friend. If you love sports, if you love New York sports, if you love America, please share the channel with a friend. I'm trying to get as many subscribers as I can, trying to grow this channel, and I need you to help me do it. So I appreciate all your support more than you will ever know. So thank you in advance. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about week five of the NFL season. Every week, we make our confidence picks where we don't pick against the spread, we pick winners. And every week, we not only pick who we think is going to win, but we assign a confidence rating, typically 16 when there's 16 games. This week, there are 14 games, so we will assign 14 points to the game we have the most confidence in, all the way down to number one, the game we have the least confidence in. Now, last week, it was kind of a strange week, really. We went 11-5 and five with the picks, did quite well, got 93 points. So for the season, we are now 37 up and 27 down, 365 total points. Now that places us overall 76.6 percentile in the entire country. That is actually down a little bit, negative 0.6 points. So essentially we kind of stayed where we were despite having a very good record. So it, this thing really comes down to two things, being able to predict an upset where you could find it and knowing how to allocate your points correctly. It's one thing to get these points wrong, to get these games wrong, but if you get a 16 or a 15 or a 14 wrong, it really, really hurts you. All right, well, with all of that out of the way, let's do our picks right now. So my number 14 game, what game do I have the most confidence in? No doubt, can't be fooled. It's the New York Giants at the Miami Dolphins. If you thought I was going to go Jets Broncos, uh-uh, no, no, no. Here's the thing with the Giants. Never mind Evan Neal's idiotic comments as uh, now I think I'm, I want to go eat a hamburger or a hot dog. Outside of kicking, what do the Giants really do well? I can't think of anything. I really, really can't. The offensive line is still in trouble. Uh, as of this recording, Andrew Thomas, uh, John Michael Schmidt, Shane Lemieux, none of them are practicing. It, you know, I don't know if Brian Dable is a one-year wonder like a Ben McAdoo. I don't think it's that bad, but he just doesn't have this team responding right now. And going against Miami, coming off their first loss of the season, Miami's at home. They'll be playing in the heat. They're going to be pissed off. They're going to want to put a show on at Hard Rock Stadium. I, I can't imagine the Dolphins score any, any less than 35 points in this game. So give me the Dolphins. Best bet, 14 points. Number 13, the Carolina Panthers at the Detroit Lions. You know, Detroit, give them credit. If you had to guess who the te team is in the NFL with the best rushing defense, it's actually Detroit. They're averaging 60.5 yards allowed per game on the ground. Pretty impressive. So that means if Carolina can't run the ball very much, Bryce Young is going to have to make some plays, and I just don't think he's going to be able to do it. I think the Lions D is going to hit Young a good amount. Also, you've got Detroit uh, well-rested because they played the previous Thursday night at Green Bay against Green Bay. Yeah, give me the Lions uh, with my number 13 pick to beat the Panthers. Number 12, the Philadelphia Eagles at the LA Rams. Matthew Stafford is dealing with a hip injury now. That's going to be a concern for the Rams with the defending NFC champions coming to town. I think the Rams could keep it close, and I still don't think the Eagles are really clicking. You know, I think they're still recovering from losing both their offensive coordinator and their defensive coordinator, but I think they will do enough to win this game. My number 11 game is the Kansas City Chiefs at the Minnesota Vikings. I like Kansas City in this game. You know, Brian Flores, 
The Minnesota defensive coordinator likes to play aggressive. I think um, Patrick Mahomes can you know, pick up a blitz and take it apart without too much of a problem. Uh, I do think he might be wise to target Rasheed Rice in the passing game a little bit more uh, than he has been. And as good as Minnesota is at throwing the football, remember, Kansas City has a top five defense when it comes to defending the pass. So I think the fact that Zach Wilson did a pretty good job against them, I think that gives them a little bit of a reality check. And they know they're going to have to step their game up going up against Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson and company. So give me Kansas City to win that game. Number 10, the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Buffalo Bills. You know, the Jaguars are playing their second consecutive game in London. And they have been in England for over a week now. This is a little bit hard to get a grasp on. How is Jacksonville going to really respond playing a second straight game in London? I could see them coming out very inspired, but I could see them coming out very flat. But Josh Allen's on one of those rolls that he gets on. I don't think Jacksonville has the defense to stop him. Also, this just in, Von Miller will be traveling to London with his teammates. He has been practicing. There is a chance he could be ready to play in this game. Not that I think he would play 40, 50 snaps, but he could come in on those pass rushing situations. And if he does, that makes Buffalo, their defense, which is already good, even harder to stop. All right, so give me Buffalo with the 10 pick. Number nine, the New York Jets at the Denver Broncos. Yes, I'm picking the Jets. I've got confidence this week. I believe in the New York Jets. I believe they are going to go to Denver and beat the Broncos. Both teams coming in one and three. Must win games for both. But to me, there's just no doubt the Jets are a better team than Denver. Russell Wilson has not been turnover prone this year. He's been doing pretty well. Nine touchdowns to two interceptions. But he ain't seen the defense like the Jets defense yet. Okay, I think the defensive line of the Jets will cause enough pressure. And even with the Jets depleted secondary, that'll be enough to force a turnover or two. And Denver's defense, oh my God, they are just horrific. I'm going to do a full breakdown. So check out the Jets versus Broncos game preview. That video is going to be out very, very soon as well if it isn't already there. And I'm going to give you some numbers on that video about the Denver defense and just how bad it is. The, but the pitch count is off for Brees Hall. I expect a heavy dose of Brees Hall in this game. I think along with that and the Jets defense, that is enough for victory. All right, number eight, the Thursday night game, the Chicago Bears at the Washington Commanders. Both teams uh, played decently last week in losses for the Bears. That is actually progress. For Washington, that's a step back. And these are two of the four defenses in football averaging 30 points or more allowed per game. Now, Washington did get Sam Howell back on track against Philadelphia. I think that'll con continue against a terrible Bears defense. The Washington uh, pass rush with Young, with Sweat, with Payne, all those guys, they will cause Justin Fields a lot of problems. Washington takes that game. So that's my number eight game. Number seven, probably my favorite NFL rivalry. The Baltimore Ravens at the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, whenever these two teams play, count on 20 points or less for each team and count on it being decided by about a field goal or so. And I like the Ravens right now. Um, until the Pittsburgh offense gets going again, I can't trust them. Plus, Kenny Pickett has a bone bruise on his knee, so he will be limited in this game, assuming he even plays. Uh, and I, I think I could see a late Justin Tucker field goal pulling this one out. Also, Baltimore is getting some players back in practice, like a Marlon Humphrey, Ronnie Stanley, Tyler Linderbaum, just in time for the Pittsburgh game. So even though Baltimore is on the road, I like them to win this AFC North showdown. Number six, this one was a little bit tough for me to call, but I'm going to take with my number six, the Cincinnati Bengals at Arizona. I do not make this pick confidently, my friends. Cincinnati, in the first half of their first four games, have been outscored 53-22. to Joshua Dobbs, this is amazing to me. Dobbs has not thrown an interception this season yet. And it's the second straight road game for Cincy. I think they're in trouble. I'm going to give them one more week of faith here. So I, I, I still feel they're a more talented team than uh, Arizona. I feel like Arizona's punching above its weight class. And uh, Cincinnati, if they play the way they're supposed to play, they will win this game. But again, not doing it confidently. My number five game is the Houston Texans at the Atlanta Falcons. 
The Texans are hot right now with C.J. Stroud. He has three straight games with 280 or more passing yards and two touchdowns. On the other side, Atlanta has Desmond Ritter. It feels like every week I come on this channel and I knock Desmond Ritter, but I'm sorry. I, I like Stroud right now, uh, and I still like uh, – they seem to have a lot of uh, weapons that are really, really emerging. Nico Collins, uh, most notably a wide receiver, and I still like Damian Pierce at running back. So I'm going to take Houston. Uh, to win this game. I think it'll be tight, though. All right, number four, the New Orleans Saints at the New England Patriots. This will be an ugly one. Yeah, this will be ugly. Both offenses really struggling. Both are coming off losses. And New England, I'm going to take New England. Now, I know they lost on their defense. Matthew Judon and Christian Gonzalez most likely both are out for the year. But I think it's time for uh, the New England offense to click in a little bit. I think Ramondre Stevenson is going to have a very good game at running back. I think they've been kind of figuring out their personnel. I think they need to emphasize Hunter Henry at tight end, Demario Douglas at wide receiver. You know, the likes of Kendrick Bourne and whatnot, they gave you a little bit of production early on, but I just don't think you could sustain that for the season. So I think New England is going to, uh, to pull this one out at home. My number three game is an AFC showdown, the Tennessee Titans at the Indianapolis Colts. I'm taking the Colts. Now, it's interesting. Every team in the AFC South is currently 2-2. Two and two. And the Titans have actually won the last five meetings against the Colts. And uh, But for the Colts, Jonathan Taylor is practicing. Don't know if he's going to play yet, but he is practicing. Now, the Colts have an excellent run defense. I think this time it'll be enough to contain Derrick Henry. Also, you have a new wrinkle in this rivalry named Anthony Richardson. So I'm going to take the Colts at home to end that losing streak they currently have against the Titans. Number two, the Green Bay Packers at the Oakland, Los Angeles, Las Vegas Raiders. I'm going to take the Raiders in an upset here. Everyone I've seen is taking Green Bay. Now, to me, the Packers, I thought they were really exposed against Detroit when it comes to their run defense, to their offensive line. I thought they did a very poor job. Now, Aaron Jones might play in this game, and if so, that could make uh, quite a difference. And I know Green Bay has some rest, but I think uh, the Raiders are going to have to get other players in their offense involved. You know Devontae Adams against his old team is going to want to show out, but if he's going against Jair Alexander, that's going to be a heck of a matchup to watch. But I think a player like a Josh Jacobs is going to step up in this game. Uh, hopefully they'll get Michael Mayer at tight end a little bit more involved. Uh, at home, I, I think I'm just going to take the Raiders in this game. Uh, I think it's just it's one of those games that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But I still don't trust Jordan Love in those big spots yet. And he hasn't won a game on the road yet. So give me the Raiders. And finally, number one, the game of the week. I don't think there's any question about it. The Dallas Cowboys at the San Francisco 49ers. You know, the Niners have eliminated the Cowboys two straight years in the playoffs. I think the Cowboys have something to prove, especially on the road. And as good as Brock Purdy has been, good as Christian McCaffrey has been, I think the Dallas defense can make a heck of an impact. I'm taking Dallas to maybe not shut down the San Francisco offense, but I think they're going to do enough in this game. And uh, I definitely think this comes down to the last possession. But I'm going to take Dallas to pull off the upset at Levi Stadium and defeat the 49ers and hand them, again, their first loss since they in the regular season since they traded for CMC. Well, those are my picks for Week 5. Hey, if you've got any picks that uh, you'd like to share, put them right down there in the comments. Any upset picks, I'd love to see them. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you right back here with more content from you know where. The Wicker Chair.